What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Amanda, the buzzed artist. And today we got a special guest coming in today, and that is my husband, Ethan. Hey, guys. He painted all over himself. <laughs> we have fun here in this household. <laughs> today we're going to be making brrr, these paintings. Woo! This was so much fun. So we're going to be making our very own Charlie Brown Christmas trees. So stay tuned. Get your supplies and let's get painting. Okay, so before we get started, I do want to show you guys the various materials that I do use for this particular painting. So we're going to start with an 11 by 14 pre gessoed canvas. And we're going to be working with three different types of brushes. We got ourselves a three quarter flat wash brush. I have myself a number four filbert brush and I have a, I believe this is a number two round detail brush. And as for colors, we have one, two, three, four, five acrylic paints we're going to be using. So those are <clears throat> primary yellow, primary red, titanium white, uh, Mars black, because I don't remember this one. It's it's like Fida's la 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 silanine blue. Um, but I'll be putting all of the links to the particular materials I am using for this tutorial in the description below. So please be sure to check that out. Are you excited? Woohoo! Yeah, thumbs up. thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> thumbs up. So Ethan has all the materials that I just uh, mentioned to him, as well as uh, we have our cups of water and we have our towels ready for dipping, as well as some nice old beers. <laughs> Cheers. We are going to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our flat wash brush and you're going to dip it into your paint water. So you're going to get it nice and wet. Now, the first thing we're going to do with this painting is we want to create this kind of halo effect that's happening around our Charlie Brown tree. And I want to give it that, um, that blue outline. Okay. So what I'm going to do is with my brush, I'm just going to take some blue on my brush. I'm just going to load my brush with that blue. So if you guys are not familiar with the term load, uh, you're literally just putting acrylic paint and loading it evenly on your brush. So it looks like that. Okay. You good? You loaded? I think so. All right. So what I'm going to do is I like to hold my brush like a pencil and, um, I'm going to work broadside down, meaning I'm going to have the broadside of the brush like this or like this. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a general, um, circle touching all the edges of this canvas and I'm going to leave the center white and untouched. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in the blue and don't forget to get the sides of your canvas as well so that you don't have to hang this up. You can just straight up, just place it on your wall. So I'm just going to make, this is all for ambience. This is just to give, um, the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, that, that extra, that extra dash of, of importance that it really deserves. So it also adds like that nice pop of color that we're looking for. So you can kind of see that I'm, I'm kind of making like a, a general kind of like circle, circle, like an oblong circle, just kind of going all around the edges. I don't want to cover a lot of this. I do want to leave a lot of this white in the center to add that emphasis. So we'll just follow along for now. How you doing? Good. Yeah, excellent. So this is Ethan's first time painting with me on screen. How you feel, Ethan? Pretty good so far. Excellent. I think I handled this much. Okay, well, we're gonna have to change that up a little bit now. <laughs> Curveball? <laughs> yes. Well, because we have booze, we're going to probably be uh get more and more challenged as the night gets gets older so but that's make that, that's what makes it all all the more fun comment below if you guys like to paint with your partners it's always a wonderful way to bond and i don't know just let loose with each other right yeah how do i thin it out if i made it too dark so if you made your if you made your paint a little too dark um, one way that you can do that is just by dipping it into your water and that will help to pull your acrylic off of your brush. So that's a, that's a very ah. good question. 
little water with acrylic goes a long, long way. It, in fact, I've actually seen someone do this where they take an acrylic and they add so much water to it that it actually turns into like a watercolor. And this, in the converse side of it is you can make gauche, which is you just don't even add any water and it's like a thick version of that acrylic paint. So water, oh yes, oh my gosh. <laughs> Now, now that I kind of have this general outline going on here, I do want to add a little bit of an extra kick. Um, there is not much of a gradient happening here. I do want to have something that's a little bit more of a gradual transition from the blue to the white. So what I'm going to do is we're going to rinse our brushes. And because our canvas is still wet, this is kind of why I'm doing this right now and showing you guys. So once my once my brush is clean, I'm gonna dip it. I'm gonna dip it in my white acrylic paint. Just like so. Mm -hmm. So I'm loading my brush. Mm -hmm. And I don't actually I don't want too too much, but just enough. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the edge of where we just laid down that blue. And because that blue was still wet. I'm going to be able to very readily blend in the blue that I just put down into the white and conversely. So this is a really great way to, uh, to really blend um, your colors. Colors love to be blended together, especially when it's wet on wet. You probably have heard of that term before. Ethan, have you ever heard of that before? Wet on wet? Wet on wet. I have not, but makes sense. Yeah, so when it comes to blending anything, a lot of people tend to want to stay in their own corners. So, you know, they think, okay, blue belongs here, white belongs here, and how do I blend it? It looks unnatural. It's very true. It does look very unnatural. And the reason being is because you're not blending, you're not um, seeping the colors into one another. That's really the whole secret behind blending. I mean, I wish there was a, a more rocket science-y kind of explanation for it, but that's really as simple as it gets. Um, so when it comes to blending, never be afraid, you know, so I'm taking my brush and I'm kind of going into that blue that I made prior and then bringing it back out again. And I'm creating this really nice gradient and it just doesn't look like it's so blatant anymore. Make sense? Yeah. <laughs> I should have you on the show more often. This is great. <laughs> I love being right. <laughs> Whoa. Let's look ahead of ourselves. Hey. It is rather therapeutic. I always forget. Yeah. Just sort of waving your hands around. <laughs> I agree. I agree. This is a, a it's a great way of just like just relaxing and chilling. It's always a good thing to do when you're stressed out or when you just want to kick back, you know, there's there's really like no pressure to do this stuff. Well, so I'm going to wait until this part of our canvas is dry and then we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, people, we're back. So, I'm going to be including a traceable of the actual tree that we are using here. So Ethan and I have already gone ahead and traced the outline of the tree. So I'll be sure to include a link to that traceable in the description below. Check that out. Um, but once you kind of have it laid down here, I made sure to get the stem of the tree um, almost to the middle, maybe slightly off centered so that you can capture that swooping portion of that tree which eventually is going to have a, an ornament on it displaying the weight so you're going to be done with this brush for now because the next thing you're going to pick up um, we're going to be working with our detail brush so i'm just going to go ahead and dip that in some water and what we're going to do next is we're going to make the color brown. I almost said make brown. <laughs> um, I do that a lot. So 
Mate Brown, that is? <laughs> I, yes, I do, I do Mate Brown a lot. It's wonderful. So what I'm going to do is, uh, basically when you're making a brown, it's... <laughs> <laughs> tell Tell now it's done. <laughs> so when you're making a brown color, uh, it's usually just a dark orange. So to make orange, you just take a little bit of red, and you want to take a good deal of yellow. When it comes to making orange, you want to do a lot of yellow and just a little bit of red at a time. Red is a very powerful color, so a little of it does actually go a long way. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add in a tad of blue because blue is actually going to help darken this up quite a bit and kind of give it that nice burnt look. Okay, and once I have that, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Getting there. Yeah. This is actually a trick someone taught me was, um, because usually I like to go and use black instead, but um, she had told me, you know, hey, use blue. You, uh, doing that, you can get it, got an even richer tone to your colors, and she's absolutely right. Oh, you made green. Yeah, I'm a little <laughs> off the mark here. That's okay. So add more red to that. Really? Yeah. So when you come to a situation where mm, you're right. it's starting to look green, um, that just means you have a lot more yellow than red. So adding red to that will help to bring back the earthiness of that color. Now simply what we're going to do with this color, we're just going to go ahead and outline the branches we just laid down and then fill it in. The trick to doing branches, especially of this kind of caliber, you want to make sure your brush is especially wet. Then you want to dip it into that color you just made. It's nice wet and it's uh, loaded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the branches first so I can get that, that, nice, that nice look. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it just like a pencil and I'm very, very, very lightly, I'm just going to very lightly touch my canvas so I can get that nice, very smooth edge and very thin edge. And then I'm just gonna slowly increase the amount of bristles that I'm touching on my canvas as it goes to the center of the trunk. Okay, so once again, I'm just very lightly at the very edges of the, of the branch here, very lightly touching it. And then slowly I add more pressure as it goes to the center of the trunk of our tree. Well, we got it. You might want to add a little bit of water just to help you out a little bit. Water, water, water is a big um, asset to you when it comes to making branches. So basically I'm just going to repeat the same steps over and over again with each of my brush with each, with each of my branches Thank you. I gotta say, these are this is probably one of the hardest things you're gonna be doing with this particular painting is just making sure that your lines are nice and slick. And that's actually like a common um, obstacle that a lot of people who start painting run into is when they make, especially when they're making branches on a tree, uh, they tend to go really um, high pressure on their brushes touching their canvas. And what ends up happening is you get this thick line 
and your branches end up looking just like nubs off, you know, that are just coming off of it instead of it being like a delicate tip. So the next time you walk around and look at a, at a tree, notice how the branches come out. They usually are thicker when it comes out of the trunk and as it comes to the tip, it thins out. So just, you know, make sure when you go on when you go on your next walk or when you go outside, just just take a careful look at at any tree really you'll notice this pattern actually a big reason how I learned a lot of my techniques was just kind of observing um, just taking note of how things looked and how things kind of came to be and what makes sense in nature more often than not you know it's just being it's just opening your eyes and being more aware of that And of course, if you want to add more branches, this is totally your call. Of course, this is your tree. If you feel like you want to add maybe a little more to it, you know, you maybe want to add like another little branch. This is this is totally you. Totally you. Do you? I won't be mad. In fact, I applaud you. I feel like I'm using a lot of water, but this is a, a light, a deep enough color. Um, you're okay because we're we're gonna go back in and just add in like an accent color. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're you're okay for now. And that is a good observation. Usually when you add more water, it does um, loosen up your paint and it does make it a little lighter in tone. And what's, what's interesting too is that because you're working on, this is like your first layer on this canvas, it does come out looking a little lighter. Um, and the more layers you kind of add, the more color and deeper it's gonna it's going to look. All right, so that makes me feel better then. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little branch here, cause just because I want to. Cause I do what I want. So much more meticulous than I am. Really? Yeah, you're just like everything is just so closely paid attention to. I'm trying, man. <laughs> just want to make you proud. <laughs> the sum of our marriage. Yeah. <laughs> so sweet. You always make me proud. Don't worry. So the next thing we're going to do. Um, so I want to go ahead and add in an extra um, dimension to this. I do want to add a darker tone to the brown that we just made earlier. So the way I'm going to do that, we're going to keep our, our um, detail round brush and I'm going to make a little bit more brown, brown here because um, for this next part I do want to add in a, like a touch of a darker brown that we made before. Um, so basically we're going to make that orange color once more and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a tad more blue to this. Okay. Basically what I'm going for is a darker brown. Yeah, so mine turned green. I'm just going to go ahead and add more red. Alright. Okay. So now you can even see now it's like a, a darker, a darker form of brown here. Um, and basically once you have that color, what you're gonna go ahead and do is on the right portion of your tree, 
you're just going to follow along on the outside edge and just lay down that color. So I'm just going to take it. And because your canvas is still wet, this is perfect to um, get that nice blend going, wet on wet. This is just a very, very subtle way of kind of adding in a little, whoops, a little more color dimension. So I just did a, I just made a mess up here. That's okay. Um, if ever you feel like you went off the beaten path and you, you know, you're kind of like swearing in your mind that, oh crap, I messed this up and it's going to be ruined forever. Calm down. It's not ruined forever. Just wait for this part to dry and then go over it with your white and poof. It's all gone. And I'm also going to go to the branches and just add in little portions of that shadow. And again, uh, having a wet brush is very helpful here. But I'm just going to go ahead and add in some sections. And I'm concentrating it um, primarily like on the underside portion of the branches here. So I'm just trying to think of like where the light is coming from. So if I have a light that's coming from like this area right here, that means that everything is going to be um, bright on the left side and it's going to have a shadow on the right. So that's just a little advanced rule of thumb for, for those of you guys who have ever done like shadows. We're going to pretend our light source is coming from the left here, the left top corner. So just think about how the shadows would cast. So in every, and in this case here, the undersides of our branches are going to have that shadow going on for them. How you doing, Ethan? You getting there? Yeah. Yeah. Just take a slow and steady. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> screwed up exactly as you were saying. I feel like that happens a lot. Now, if you feel like you want to go back and add in like that lighter version of brown, you can totally go ahead and do that. Um, you just need to go and add like a bit more yellow to that brown you made, and that kind of lightens back that brown up. So you can go back and forth with this part. Now that you kind of know how to make both colors, um, and your canvas is pretty wet, you can take this to your advantage. You can, you can experiment, you can go back in with the lighter brown, um, so that you know we don't have as many dark portions on your on your um, branches, or you can you can keep going with a darker brown. This, this part is totally up to you. Oh, this looks cool. gotta say too white is like the best color ever because it just cleans up everything <laughs> just like got right. a stain put some white on that shit okay awesome so we're going to just put in the finishing touches on this part and then once this part dries we're going to move on to the next step and adding some pine needles next what we're going to do is add in our pine needles and because it's a charlie brown christmas tree there's not many so that is <laughs> way to our advantage so what we're going to do is we're going to take our detail round brush and we're going to make sure it's nice and rinsed out and clean. So we're going to make the color green. Um, so what we're going to do to make green, if you guys remember from kindergarten, what makes green? Yellow. 
No. <laughs> red, and, red and blue? No, it's purple. Uh, <laughs> yellow and blue. Yellow and blue. Yeah. <laughs> you pass. <laughs> D minus kindergarten. My husband's an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do just like Ethan said, yellow and blue. Yellow and blue make green. So I'm going to make sure that I got a good deal of yellow in this color because I do want to have like a, a pretty vibrant green. Whenever it comes to doing anything um, and you want to add in like a vibrant, like lighter tone to any color, adding white or or white excuse me, adding yellow or white, God, uh, is the best way to get to that point. So I got this nice, um, it's really a, almost like a forest green color. That's, you know, it's blatant enough, um, but it's not like a primary green where it's like kind of in your face. It's got some tone and texture to it. We're just gonna make sure our brushes are nicely rinsed and they're wet like we, we, like we did with our branches. Having a wet, a wet brush is always the best for uh, pulling your acrylic and giving you that sharp edge that you're looking for. So I dip my brush in water, I dip it back into my paint, I got my brush nicely loaded. Um, to do a pine needle, especially at the tips of the trees, the pine needles all kind of splay out in one particular direction with the tip of the branch as the center. What do I mean by that? So basically, I'm just gonna show you, I'm holding my brush like a pencil, and what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go to the um, tip of, the, of my um, branch here, maybe go up about half an inch, and I'm just going to do a line coming out, just like so, okay? And basically it's like a fan at this point. So you're gonna add another needle that comes out that way, another needle that comes out um, a little, little over to the right. And it just kind of repeats itself until it goes around the entire um, tip of the, of the um, tree. Words, words. So what you end up getting is this really cool looking um, edge of a pine tree and with the needles all kind of falling out quite beautifully. And I'm gonna keep adding more needles in here. So once I kind of have like the basic form, I'm gonna go back in and just keep adding more and more needles. I, I wanna create that, that look that this is like, you know, it was once a great pine um, but on the edges, it's still it's still got its thing. It's still it's still prancing around, showing off what it what it had. <laughs> I was beautiful once. It's trying yeah. to say. So um, from here on out, I'm kind of just like kind of willy nilly adding in lines, and I'm very lightly touching my my brush to the canvas. And you know, of the little paint that I have left, it kind of gets streaked on, and that adds like a really nice touch. Okay. And you know, I do want to make sure that the edges here are a little bit longer than than the bottoms. It just creates that that cool um, fir tree kind of look. And let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one. Same concept, I'm just gonna to go to the tip, move my brush a little up, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and make lines. Just like so. Nothing crazy, very simple, very straightforward. Maybe I'm just gonna take a little bit. And you know, if, you, if you're feeling like, oh, you know, this could use a little bit more of, a, of a, the fir tree green action, you know, go for it. This is, this is totally your painting, your call. Very nice, Ethan. Thank See, you. I'm telling you, you got that, you got that touch, man. I got that touch. Portions on the, on the uh, tree here that don't exactly have a tip to them, but they do have 
uh, pine needles coming out of them. So I'm going to go work on that first branch we were initially on. I'm going to go probably like right around here somewhere. And I'm just going to pick a point and just start to make these lines coming out of them, kind of focusing on that one center. That's, <laughs> that's really what I want to do. Mm. And again, if your paint is not exactly, like if your lines are getting thicker, just add a little bit more water to your brush and that helps to break up the acrylic and help your paint glide just a little bit more. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, every time you wanna put in pine needles, always pick a specific point that you wanna kinda center all your needles and then you just, you just kinda go for it and, and paint along that. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to let, let you guys go and kind of just have fun with this part. It's all the same kind of thing over and over and over again. Isn't there a character from Back to the Future called Needles? You know what? You're probably going to kill me and probably ask for a divorce, but I've actually never seen <laughs> all of Back to the Future. Are you serious? Any of them? I mean, I've seen like... I've seen the, the Go Johnny Go part when he meets his mom at the gym or whatever. That's a good part. And um, I remember really liking that song, and that's why I, that was the reason why I remembered that movie. You have three of them. I, yes, I, I <laughs> know. But no, I did not, I wasn't aware that there was a character named Needles. At least I think there is. I was just looking for confirmation because I'm not sure, but obviously oh. we need an expert. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Sorry, I failed you. Has anybody started listening to Christmas music yet? Um, yeah, but comment below. It, was there any? Uh, did you guys listen to any Christmas music yet, or are you staunch Decemberers? You have to wait until it's December first in order to even consider listening to Christmas music. Ethan, what are your thoughts? I think that Thanksgiving deserves its its time in the spotlight. It's a good holiday. Amen. I believe it deserves from at least Thursday until the Sunday following. Yeah, we kind of disagree on the Sunday part, but <laughs> I I agree with like 95% of what you just said there. And you know what I just realized? I do want to add another branch on the inside corner here. This is totally just my volition. Don't have to do it. Um, I just kind of saw the opportunity and I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a little branchy here right here. Just a little one, little guy. This happens sometimes if you're kind of like you're you're painting and you're like, yeah, you know what? I could use a branch just just there. I, I just want to put like a, a little little thing, a little thing that says hi. I just want to put it there. Hey, go for it. Who am I to say no, right? Once I add that in, go. I just go in and I add in my needles. How cute is this? Like I'm, I'm verging like palm tree territory. <laughs> yeah, and 
honestly, these these will look like a little bit like palm trees. Um, the the key is you want to just do a lot of lot of little strokes. Um, palm trees are kind of known for their like bigger kind of broad leafed strokes to them. Um, the trick is you just want to do like little tiny needles, little tiny strokes with your brush. So you, you kind of want to go into like the middle portions of your leaves and just very lightly with your brush, just go ahead and add in those extra like detail strokes. That helps to really like break the illusion of a, of a pine needle, uh, excuse me, of um, a palm tree and into a pine needle. Okay, gang, so the the next thing we're going to do, um, we're going to go ahead and add in our ornament. So the reason why I want to do the ornament first is because we can kind of gauge where the ornament is in relation to where the trunk is, and then we can elongate the trunk a little bit if we need to. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to stick with our detail brush. I'm just going to get it nice and clean, because now what we're going to do is we're going to Dip. Ooh, I just like spit all over my canvas. First we spit on our canvas. Um, so I'm gonna just dip my brush in some red. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to this um, pine needle here, the one that's kind of the lowest one of them all. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to paint a round circle. all the way around just like so which guy yet yeah, which one so tiny. Oh, I got the tiny one yep the tiny detail and I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this part in. You can always move on to your filbert, the larger brush, so you know you can have a little bit more control. I'm gonna probably do that actually. I'm just gonna move on to that other brush we haven't used quite yet. I'm just going to go in and add in that red. The detail brush is more for like outlines and just making sure um, wherever I put something is kind of where I want it. Yeah, and you can go back and forth. So if you can go back to your detail brush, if you really want to clean up the edges of what you just laid down. Is there a technique to doing circles or you just sort of swoosh? You swoosh. Swoosh. We're very technical here. <laughs> Okay. And because I like to make things a little more difficult, I do want to add in a slight shadow to this. So remember how we talked about there is a light source coming in from the top left corner here? Um, we're going to replicate that. So the way we're going to do that is because the light's coming in this way, there's going to, your ball here is going to be light on this side and it's going to be darker on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that filbert brush that um, we really haven't used yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dark, a darker version of the red we just put down. And the way we're going to do that is I just take a little bit of red and the tiniest, tiniest bit of black, very tiny. I don't need too much. I just want to have enough so that I can kind of make a distinction between the red I just put down and the black. Okay. And once again, light source coming in from this direction. It's going to be light on this side and dark on this side. So I'm just going to take my brush and I'm just going to put the color on the left, excuse me, the right portion of the ball here. Because my canvas is still wet, this is perfect that I can go ahead and just add in that color and just bring it towards the center of the canvas here. So this is just, it's a very tiny touch. I, I don't want to like focus too, too much on this part. I just wanted to 
kind of show you guys that there there is that darker side that you could go ahead and add. And if you feel like you added a little too much of the dark, you can always go back in with the red and kind of just like pull back a little bit and just blend. So this is again, just playing a little bit with your colors and having them work for you. Cool. And once again, one more time, remember how I said about that light source is coming in from this direction? We're gonna put in a nice little accent on our on our ornament here. So I'm just gonna take my filber once more. Uh, you know what, no, I'm gonna use my detail round brush for this one. So I'm gonna take my detail round and I'm going to dip it in my white. And remember, I got my, my light source coming from here. So I'm just gonna put a I'm gonna put that reflective white right on the ball right there. Okay, so immediately what you get is you get like a, the, the illusion of something very shiny on here. I got sidetracked, I'll put it back on. <laughs> That's fine. Now, now that I mentioned um, before putting the ornament first so you can kind of eyeball your uh, your trunk. So I do notice that my trunk could use a little bit more elongating so I'm just going to take that brown that I had and I'm just going to take my trunk and just kind of lengthen it out a little bit. Just lengthen it out just like so. Okay. And I'm only, I want to do this because I, I do want to make sure that, you know, I create that, that, that cool illusion of the Charlie Brown tree. You know, it's tipping over, it's about to fall right down, but it's holding fast. Okay. And if you kind of did what I just did and you kind of have some like splotches on the center here or on the sides, I'm just going to take my detail brush, dip it in white and clean it up. Just like so. All right, nothing to it. So we are almost done, you guys. We're, we're heading to the finish line because the last thing we're going to do is we're gonna make a little stand for our tree to stand on. So it doesn't quite make sense that it's kind of like a little nub kind of floating in space like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, an X that marks the middle, which is our trunk. Okay, so I kind of just did a sketch first, but basically you want to make an X. You want to make an X that goes right over the center of your May I? trunk. Yep. And basically this is just an outline. It's just to kind of get your eyeball to place this just right. But basically you want to make an X, um, you want to make like a bold X, I guess is the, it's like, it's just like a fat X that's right um, in the center of your tree here. And I would suggest you can do this with a pencil, very easy, very simple. Um, but once you have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my detail, my detail round brush, and it's going to come through for us once more. So I'm going to make... Uh, a very, very, very light version of brown color. So what I'm gonna do is, once again, I'm gonna take a lot of yellow. I'm gonna take a lot of yellow. I wanna have a little bit of red, not too much, just a little. Just a little red. Okay. Now, this time, okay, actually, a little bit of red, yep. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little blue. a little blue and if it looks green just add a bit more red so you're basically making that brown once again now once you got that brown color I'm gonna go ahead and add in some white because I really want to lighten this up a little bit Okay, 
So at this point, it's kind of like a really tan color, okay? So I'm just gonna go rinse my brush out. So I got my brush, it's nicely rinsed. And then I'm just gonna dip it back into the paint here. And what I'm gonna do, very simply, hey, you got it, you're good. Okay. Very simply is I'm just going to go and fill in the X with this color, okay? So I'm using the detail brush just to kind of get my hand pretty steady and place the paint where I need it to go. And then I can always move on to my bigger brush to fill in. So the trick is here, um, the, the tree itself, like the, the trunk, is nestled in this X. So I'm just making sure that there is some little bit of coverage of the tree in the X here. Just a little bit, not too much. You sounded very intrigued. That was the secret I was looking for. Uh huh. Full of secrets. <laughs> Probably not the best thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be seductive. <laughs> okay, everybody. So the cameras did cut out just a little earlier than we wanted to, but we went ahead and filled in our X with that light brown color. Then what we ended up doing was we created um, you know when you make a box and you want to create like different sides of that box? Well, simply all we did was just get that same tan color that we were using and I added a, just a little bit of black, tiny, tiniest bit of black to that. And once I added that in, I just simply, I'll kind of give you a demo right now. I just simply went in with my detail brush and I just went to the corner, uh, made a line going down, another line going down. So I just made pretty much a couple lines going down and then I just made uh, a line connecting these two together. And then I just go ahead and fill it in, okay? And once you have that, this is the basic premise of doing your Charlie Brown holiday Christmas tree. Wonderful, wonderful job getting your Charlie Brown Christmas trees all done. If you guys are new here to my channel, please be sure to like this video and to subscribe to my channel so that you can see more fun painting tutorials from me in the future. I post videos every Wednesday, so please be sure to come check out the next video happening next week. All right, everybody. Ta-ta. Bye. Bye. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Sophisticated.